Alrighty, so now we have completed the entire schematic capture portion of this project. So the next step is going to be to um, upload all this information onto the PCV portion of the project. So just quick recap of what I did. So after I finished the schematic portion, I just kept going over it and looking at it uh, just multiple times to make sure everything was right, looking for any mistakes. And kind of like I said before, it's okay if you find mistakes, like even if we get to the layout portion and we find mistakes, going back and fixing them is perfectly fine. Like that's that's pretty normal procedure whenever you're designing a board like this, especially when we get to bigger, more complicated boards. I mean, these things will take months to fully develop. So um, it's not a big deal at all, so don't worry about that. So yeah, so I just went through, kind of made everything look nice and clean and professional. Um, and so now we're going to prep our PCV for the layout portion. So um, I think I already showed some of this stuff in the beginning when we kind of how we work with templates to help us uh, be more efficient with our workflow. And I'm not sure if I actually use this template, but I'm going to show you. Uh, we're going to set up our rules, our design rules before we get started. So I click design rules and I'm going to click on this. I'm going to right click and do import rules. So then we have, see how the top one is selected. We're going to shift click, hit OK. Then we're going to go to our reference folder and we're going to look at this design rules dot rule file to template. So what it is, is um, or hit yes for clear existing. So what it, what, what, it, what it is, is so previously I went in and created and just did, you know, edit, modified this rules table. And then what I did is hit a right click export rules. And so then I just saved them. So now I can just open, I can open that rules file and it changes all of the, all the rules that I want to, to my liking. Right. Um, so right now what we're actually working with, so the only rule, like, how would I say it? So I, the way I envision PCB design rules is in layers. So like you'll have like a, a DFM layer, uh, like a design for safety design for validation layer and then like a dfx layer maybe which is like designed for excellence um and so kind of what you do is you add more and more layer quote unquote, layers of rules so that your board becomes closer and closer to like a perfect board right so right now all we're worried about is the design for manufacturing uh, rules so meaning so the design for manufacturing rules hopefully it's self-explanatory but basically it's rules that are in place to help ensure your board is easily manufacturable and it's not like something you have on the board is going to like double the cost of production because of, of something a mistake you made right so our rules are there to prevent that for example like your trace widths can't be too small because that just jacks the cost of the board up a really really high um stuff like having too small of holes or vias that uh, increases the cost a significant amount so stuff like that is kind of what the rules are set up for right now and that's all we're going to worry about and as we progress as engineers we'll start adding more and more layers of rules so um, you know our board comes closer and closer to like perfection so now that we have all the rules set up let's go ahead and uh, modify the board size so the previous project we didn't really have a board size so what we did was we just created our PCB on a large board and we just shrunk the board to fit the circuit however we had it but let's uh this time what's what's pretty more common is you'll have like the mechanical engineering team will come back to you and say okay here's the mechanical enclosure that you have to fit your board in because of you know product specifications that are given to us by the product design team or the product development team so like marketing and stuff like we want it we want the apple computer to look like this so your your computer your board has to fit within this space or else right that's pretty much how it works so um with that being said uh what i what i just went and did was look up on the internet look for some reference projects and we we get um some some rough dimensions so this one right here looks like it's uh 15 centimeters by about we'll call that like 10 centimeters maybe um we'll call well, i mean we can call it eight centimeters if we want 15 by eight we'll call it 15 by 10 and we'll see if we can shrink it down but that's what we're going to start with so what we're going to do to to modify the board size to begin with is we're going to switch to we're going to view board planning mode and we're going to do design and we're going to do edit board shape 
So right now, if you look in the bottom right, it tells us our board size already. So it looks like it's 152.7, whatever, 0.27 millimeters. So we're just going to shrink it. It's only like a tad bit, but right, we're going to shrink it down to 150 by 150. So we just keep inching it in and more. So 150.8. I would say these exact things do matter like a significant amount. Um, oh, it even says length, 102 millimeters right there. So I'm looking in the bottom left corner of my graphical editor and I'm watching it go up and up. So we're at 150.02 millimeters. And that'll be a good start, I think. Um, and then, of course, whoops. So we're gonna hit design. Edit board shape, and then we're gonna go. This is gonna go down to 100 exactly. Hundred point three. Okay, looks looks good. Okay, so that's a good place to start. Um. Okay, so now we have our board all set up. So now we're good to start placing PCB components and everything else on that. So this is this is a good starting point. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much where I'll end this video. In the next video, I'll, start, I'll go over some tips about how to actually begin the phase of actually doing the PCB layout. So if this video helped you, please drop a like, and um, that really helps my channel out, so I really appreciate that. And subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all the videos in this project series. I'll be releasing them regularly. I also post a lot of other videos related to electrical engineering. So if that's something that interests you, then subscribing will probably benefit you there. Um, so thank you so much if you made it to the end of the video. And hopefully I will see you on the next one.